Thank you to everybody here today. Uh, I'm Hannah, a friend of Mark and Katrin, and I will be officiating the wedding today. Uh, so thank you to all family and friends uh, for coming here today to celebrate the marriage between Mark and Katrin, who, to all who have known them, have loved each other for years, and today are becoming officially a family. Uh, legally. <laughs> I am so excited to be here to make this official union between two of truly the kindest, most loving and warm people who I know. I'm going to read a poem that was chosen by Mark and Katrin. Uh, it's called, As I Walked Out One Evening by W.H. Auden. As I walked out one evening, walking down Bristol Street, the crowds upon the pavement were fields of harvest wheat. And down by the brimming river, I heard a lover sing, under an arch of the railway, love has no ending. I love you, dear, I'll love you till China and Africa meet. And the river jumps over the mountains and the salmon sing in the street. I love you till the ocean is folded and hung up to dry. And the seven stars go squawking like geese about the sky. The years shall run like rabbits, for in my arms I hold the flower of ages and the first love of the world. But all of the clocks in the city began to whir and chime. Oh, let not time deceive you, you cannot conquer time. In their burrows of the nightmare, where justice naked is, time watches from the shadows and coughs when you would kiss. In headaches and in worry, vaguely life leaks away, and time will have its fancy, tomorrow or today. Into many a green valley drifts the appalling snow. Time breaks and thread dances, at the driver's brilliant bow. Oh, plunge your hands in water, plunge them in up to the wrists. Stare, stare in the basin and wonder what you've missed. The glacier knocks in the cupboard, the desert sighs in the bed, and the crack in the teacup opens. A lane to the land to the dead, where the beggar raffles the banknotes and the giant is enchanting to Jack, and the lily white boy is a roarer and Jill goes down on her back. Oh, look, look in the mirror, oh, look in your distress. Life remains a blessing, although you cannot bless. Oh, stand, stand at the window as the tears scald and start. You shall love your crooked neighbor with all your crooked heart. It was late, late in the evening. The lovers, they were gone. The clocks had ceased their chiming and the deep river ran on. Katrin, would you like to read your vow? I would. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, but my sister Brenna once said to us, 
in a world full of other people, somehow you two found each other. <laughs> I don't think she was in a particularly complimentary mood when she said it. <laughs> I think it was said in mild annoyance. <laughs> but I liked it. <laughs> you are truly my other. I love so many things about you. You are one of the most genuinely kind people I've ever met. I love the warmth you bring to your interactions with everyone, even strangers. I love your fascination with ideas. Even when you're performing the most mundane tasks, your head is in the clouds. <laughs> I love your silliness, your deeply held values, and your devotion to causes much bigger than yourself. You are my best friend, my organizing co-conspirator. <laughs> and the most loving, wonderful partner I could imagine. I feel more fully myself when I'm with you than I do when we're apart. It means the world to me that you uprooted yourself from Ontario and moved here to be with me. I know it's meant that you haven't been as present in your family's life as you want to be. I'm so grateful for the way you've prioritized our relationship. I vow to appreciate and nurture the beautiful life that we've built together, to approach each day with generosity and tenderness, and to love you forever. <laughs> Katrin. I feel so incredibly happy to stand here beside you today in front of our friends and family. And I'm overjoyed to be marrying you because quite simply, you are the best human being that I have ever met. <laughs> I've been captivated by you since the very first day we met. It was on our first day of graduate school and a group of us went out to a restaurant after classes. And though we didn't have much of an opportunity to talk, I, I was thinking about you for, for days and weeks afterwards and I don't know what it was or at least at first I didn't and I think it was something about your bearing something in the way about the way that you talk to others and as if you were speaking to their best selves and I think now I can say more precisely what it is that I love about you so much and what's so very special about you and it's like Katrin you are fiercely and unfailingly kind. Your generosity, your devotion, and your humility are apparent to all you meet. You make fast friends with the most varied types of people because it is clear to all that you genuinely care. But you are more than sweet, Katrin. Your kindness is neither false, naive, nor driven by fear. No, your exceptional warmth and humility stem from a, a relentless and radical commitment to love and justice. Yours is a business-like love. <laughs> Active, militant, and indefatigable. You have had the foresight to cultivate it from your earliest days, and you have had the wisdom to delight in its expression. Your kindness is labor and fortitude, the muscular exercise of the heart. You make your conversation partner feel like they are the smartest person in the room, precisely because you are the smartest person in the room. Aww. And today, as I declare my love be, be, to you and others, I, I want to commit to you by solemnly vowing to perform an equal share of the labor of social reproduction. <laughs> Swear to do an equitable portion of cooking, cleaning, shopping, and childcare in our home. I pledge as well to be actively engaged in the work of emotional labor. I commit to, to working harder to cultivate and maintain friendships with, with family and others, and to be emotionally available to you to share my worries and listen to yours. And I promise to, to value our careers equally and not to make life choices that prioritize my interests over yours. 
and I value, I, I vow to be an equal partner to you in the support of our family in sickness and in health, in celebration and in mourning. I vow to you for the rest, I, I vow to you to love you for the rest of your life with the same intensity of feeling that I feel today. Until fate do us part, I, I will respect your wishes, honor these commitments, and love you without reservation. Thank you. Patrin, <laughs> uh, will you repeat after me? Uh, I declare that I do not know of any lawful impediment <laughs> that I do not know of any lawful impediment. Why I, Katrin McPhee, why I, Katrin McPhee, may not be joined in matrimony to Mark Culligan. May not be joined in matrimony to Mark Culligan. Mark, uh, I declare that I do not know of any lawful impediment. I declare that I do not know of any lawful impediment. Why I, Mark Culligan, may not be joined in matrimony to Katrin McPhee. Why I, Mark Culligan, may not be joined in matrimony to Katrin McPhee. Uh, I, call, I call upon all present. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I call upon all present that I take you to be that I take you to be my lawfully wedded partner. My lawfully wedded partner. I call upon all present to witness that I, Mark Culligan. I call upon, I call upon all present to witness that I, Mark Culligan. <laughs> take you, Katrin McPhee. Take you, Katrin McPhee. To be my lawfully wedded partner. Now for a brief uh, moment of paperwork. Now for the exchange of rings. <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Marriage Act, <laughs> I pronounce you, Katrin Ray McPhee, and Mark Sinan Culligan to be lawfully wedded.
my name's Janice and I'm Mark's mom. My husband and I fought tooth and nail over who was going to make the speech. <laughs> and as usual, he got his way. <laughs> I'm here representing the Culkin family all the way from beautiful Ontario. <laughs> home with the Great Lakes, Great Craft Beer, and the not so great Doug Ford. <laughs> and my only son. He's been a delightful child. <laughs> kind, thoughtful, and fun-loving. A joy to raise. His favorite song as a little boy was Skin of a Rinky Dinky Doo <laughs> by Sharon Lois and Braun. <laughs> And Katrin tells me he still sings it to her every night. <laughs> Mark has always been outgoing and a little loud. I will never forget the image of Mark on stage singing Christmas carols with his preschool choir belting out the tunes a notch above all the other children oh. while holding his crotch the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Mark has brought us a tremendous amount of love and laughter through the years. Early on it became clear he was blessed with the gift of the gab. And also, as the sisters say, the curse of the gas. <laughs> Mark also had problems with sleepwalking. I remember one night when he was about five, he walked into sleep down the hall to the laundry room and peed in the laundry basket filled with clean clothes. <laughs> And from that point on, I had no choice, dark diapers for Mark until he was 21. <laughs> Mark also began reading at an early age and showed an interest in history, like his grandmother, Jessie. He watched the History Channel avidly, and he read the National Geographic for hours and hours while on the toilet. <laughs> his love of history led him to study at Wilfrid Laurier University, and later in Russia and Kingston, where he did his master's. It was in Kingston that he met Katrin. I knew when I first saw them together that she would be the girl he would marry. They seemed very happy and well matched. Mark always said he loved intelligent women, and in Katrin he has found that and more. Hmm. Katrin has continuously impressed our family with her generosity, patience, and kindness, as well as her ability to communicate in a high, squeaky voice. <laughs> Mark and Katrin, as you start your married life, my advice to you is to continue to practice respect and love for one another. I'm very proud of you both, and thank God for giving us such a dear son and now a lovely new daughter-in-law. Mark, I want you to know that no matter how far apart we are and how many years pass, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby will be. <laughs> now please join me in an Irish toast to the bride and groom as you slide down the banister of life. May the splinters never point the wrong way. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark and Katrin.
Katrin's youngest sister. And for those of you who I haven't yet met, my name is Sarah, I'm Katrin's, I'm Katrin's oldest sister. And we would just like to take a minute and say uh, it's so nice to see so many people that Katrin and Mark love so much all together under one roof. And thank you all for making it out tonight. Uh, we're going to say a, a few words, so um, get comfortable for the next 45 minutes. We're going to be your guides through the lives of Mark and Katrin. Um, so take it away, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, so, so one of my one of my earliest memories in life, I would say, that's fully formed is the night that Brent was born. And I remember that night for a lot of reasons, but uh, I remember very distinctly getting the phone call from my mom in the middle of the night saying that you have another sister. And I remember the sinking feeling of just terrible disappointment because I, I so badly wanted a brother. And tonight, 25 years later, I finally have my brother. Aww. Growing up, Trin was, in a lot of ways, the classic middle child. She found herself often as sort of a mediator, uh, a peacekeeper between our various disputes, her arguments over the years. Um, but she's not always, always so sweet. <laughs> first wedding she has planned. Uh, as a child, Katrin organized an entire wedding for two local dogs in her <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shauna, for your patience. Uh, <laughs> Katrin has always been a very avid, um, active community organizer. Um, as a child, she organized an entire dog obstacle course. Also, thank you, Shauna. Most of her activism was dog-related. <laughs> interest as a child. She was never good at it, but she did horseback riding. Um, judo, uh, she was a member of a local village people tribute band. <laughs> and did multiple semantic tournament lip syncing. Uh, I believe he delighted as the chef. <laughs> so Katrin has always been a bit of a weirdo, but a nice weirdo. Um, as two people who have both spent significant chunks of their lives sharing a room with Katrin, uh, we can attest that she developed her quick wit and biting humor at a very young age. <laughs> so beneath that precious little face has always been a sarcastic dick. <laughs> <laughs> and although she's my little sister, she's blazed trails always. She was marching off to summer camp when I was too scared to go. She was the first one to have a boyfriend. She marched off to Europe and traveled internationally far before any of us did. And she is now the first to get married. As the youngest sister, I in many ways developed my personality by imitating my older sisters. <laughs> I cannot tell you how glad I am that I had you around to copy Katrin. Um, in many ways, I'm still trying to steal your life essence. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was a real honor growing up in your sometimes intimidatingly large shadow. Aww. We are so proud looking at this beautiful Passionate, kind, intelligent woman. Who is our sister? She is the sweetest legal shark around. <laughs> <laughs> she has a passion for mustard colored power suits. <laughs> and well. um, but she is not without her quirks. She is charmingly messy <laughs> and a really terrible driver. <laughs> um, and she may have acquired her cat Beatrix through some somewhat underhanded negotiation. <laughs> and we know that Mark loves her for everything she is, including these imperfections. <laughs> when we first started brainstorming things to say about, about Mark, I thought, well, wouldn't it be awesome if I could remember the first time I met Mark and kind of tell a story in that vein. Um, but
but I, I can't remember the first time I met Mark because it feels like he's always been part of our family and has always been around. He's the kind of guy who will pick you up at the airport at midnight and not whine about it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll break into the wedding ice cream at 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> he will pack up your entire house and not complain. Um, he, as many people in the audience can attest to, will put on a suit in the midst of a really disgusting gastrointestinal illness, <laughs> ride the TTC across Toronto, stand at the graveside celebration of life of your grandfather, who I know would be truly touched to be here today. If it's important to Katrina, it's important to Mark. Mark and Katrina met, as many other people have said, doing their Masters of Arts at, at Queen's, uh, studying the history of the left of Canada, which is really all you need to know about them. <laughs> so Mark and Katrin are pretty much the definition of an anti-capitalist power couple. Um, in fact, you might be the only one. I'm oh, sorry, not the room. <laughs> has in many ways defined their partnership. Uh, they have been deeply involved in a local organization called Solidarity Halifax, Woo! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where they do so many tasks the mind truly boggles. Um, having guest starred as a roommate of theirs very briefly a few years ago, um, <laughs> I can speak to the seemingly endless energy these two have for pursuing justice for the most vulnerable amongst us, from spending hours on picket lines, uh, to uh, having meetings in our living room, to then spending up the whole night to pursue their own piles of homework. Uh, these two are truly awe-inspiring with the uh, commitment they have to the causes they dedicate their lives to. Hmm. Yes, uh, no family dinner, uh, car trip. <laughs> <laughs> Board game night is ever boring when you have these two brilliant minds dissecting the roots of inequality. And power. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, while they are both such serious and brilliant people, they are equal parts weird and silly. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I came home before Katrina, only to have Mark call out from the other room, Is that you, Queenie Bear? <laughs> 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 yeah, they, they're so obnoxious that they actually have sort of their own language. So who amongst me can tell me what a snuggle dumpling is? <laughs> they, they say that opposites attract, but that theory certainly does not hold up here. <laughs> In fact, if there are two people who are more alike, we do not want to meet them. <laughs> In all seriousness, Katrina and Mark, you two make me believe that people truly can be destined to be together. Yes. Yes. Uh, they will never run out of things to debate and discuss, ideas to share, and finding new ways to really weird out everyone who loves them. <laughs> They have a way of bringing people together that tonight we're all here for you. Um, so, I can't wait to see what life has in store for you guys. Uh, we ask you all to raise a glass. Cheers to Bobby having a brother. First off, I want to welcome everybody and, and thank them all sincerely for the huge distances that you travel to get here. And, uh, and the expense and, you know, the time. And we really appreciate you and I, I'm sure. Uh, I first met Katrin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, March 16th, 1990. <laughs> and I've spent the rest of my life falling in love with her more and more every day. Aww. She inspires me. She touched me. I can't say how much more that I love you. I met Mark in Kingston, and from the moment I met Mark, I knew 
Trin's in trouble. <laughs> They're in trouble with each other. But they've gone on to prove to me that they were meant to be. And I wish that my other two get this lucky. <laughs> Although I know Brenna is there. <laughs> we love Kazi too. But really, you know, I just wanted to let you know, Mark, I'm so happy you're part of our family. And your family is a part of our family now. So we're just one happy family. So God love you. And I know you're going to go on and do wonderful, people, wonderful things for a lot of people. And you make me so proud. I can hardly breathe. Okay? Thank but the list is mostly about Mark. That's okay. <laughs> Mark and I grew fairly close because, like I said in nursing school, that I had a new brother when I really had an older sister, Jessica, 14 months earlier. Um, Mark's birthday, or when other holidays came around, I loved it because I've always wanted the brother to play toys with. Because mm. I didn't like that dolly stuff. Mm. Um, Mark has always been a special one of my personal feelings because he's always been able to respect me and explaining different things is because I'm different, like the English language. <laughs> he also explained different board games and so forth, but blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but the best part was that I thought that was unique, maybe, was that he enjoyed holding me down. <laughs> as hard as he could so the family dog could lick me. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha, I'm you. <laughs> Karin, Katrin, you don't have anything to worry about in coming into this family because no matter what, Mark should be behind your back. As much as he won't admit out loud that he is in the wrong. <laughs> he doesn't get that from us, really. Um, I also want to welcome you to the family even though you probably know that already. But I also want you to be aware, like I always say to you, just keep your kissy kissy business a little bit on the low down now. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark and Katrin. This is our thank you speech. Thank you all so much for being here to celebrate with us today. Thank you for that. We feel so incredibly lucky to have such wonderful friends and family. People traveled here from near and far. We have guests from the South Shore from the United States, <laughs> from Halifax, from Cape Breton, from New Brunswick, Quebec, Ontario, Alberta. Thank you all so much for coming. A special thank you as well to our friends and families who volunteered to help set up, to serve folks and transport things. This couldn't be possible without you. Thank you. <laughs> We also wanted to thank the, the venue staff and the catering staff for all their hard work. Um, and and they really put a lot of effort into making us have a great time. And so we really appreciate that. <laughs> but we also want to take a few minutes to thank a few people who have made special efforts to contribute to our wedding. And our first heartfelt Thank you. Goes out to Jackie Barclay, who has baked this gorgeous wedding cake. 
The fabulous Jackie Barkley has been a pillar on the left of Halifax for many years. She is single and the best of friends. She's a brilliant conversationist and an awesome baker. We love you, Jackie. We honor you. And we put Uptown Funk on the playlist tonight. Kaylee Ryan has been our enthusiastic and perfect MC this evening. Kaylee has been a very dear friend of mine since we were 12. And Haley actually cut short a once in a lifetime a big family trip to Ireland in order to be here with us tonight. And that means more to us than. We love you, Haley. Hannah Gerson jumped through many a uh, bureaucratic hoop to get a one-time Justice of the Peace license <laughs> so she could give us the meaningful ceremony that we wanted. Uh, Hannah and I only met a few years ago, but I already can't imagine my life without our friendship. I love you. <laughs> my mom is a floral witch goddess. And <laughs> she arranged um, all of the flowers that are here tonight, and she also had some help from my hardworking sisters. So hmm. thank you all so much for the, the work that you did and bringing this all together and everything else you did for the wedding. Um, thank you to my dad who played during our ceremony. Hmm. My dad first learned, uh, I think, to play Time in a Bottle um, for his parents' 60th wedding anniversary, mm. but he wasn't actually allowed to play it because the church hall in which it was held thought that the uh, song title referred to alcohol, so he was... <laughs> <laughs> so he was censored. <laughs> um, but it, it really meant so much to us to have you play during our ceremony. Um, and thank you for everything else you did for the wedding. Um, my sisters mentioned that me mentioned that we lost uh, my mom's dad, Bill Perry, this year. Um, and I wanted to take a moment to remember him and all of our loved ones who we wish had been here tonight with us. I also want to thank the entire McPhee family, both for all of their contributions to making today possible but also for the warmth and generosity that they have consistently shown towards me since Katrina and I started dating. You've always gone out of your way to make me feel welcome and, and appreciated, and, and that is more precious to me than you can know. And finally, thank you to the entire Culligan family for um, being so welcoming and loving to me uh, and for all of your help with the wedding and especially to Janice and Heather for those perfect roasts. <laughs> <laughs> loving and perfect roasts of, of Mark and myself. So thank you so much. Yeah.